Now, we've learned how we can use our geometry to either accelerate or decelerate our flow, and that depends on Mach number. So if I'm going supersonic, I have to expand if I want to accelerate, and if I'm going subsonic, I have to contract if I want to go supersonic. And so now, let's just go ahead and have our generic architecture right here. I'm going to introduce a new property here, which is called star. Star. So boop, 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 right there, that is the throat. And then somewhere else, doesn't matter where, I have this. Now, if you look in your tables, you'll actually see relationships between some star area. And there's a reason for that. So star is simply talking about the throat. This is where the star is. And so at that point, I have my area, star. I have my density, star. I even have a velocity, star. And my Mach number is always assumed to be one at the throat. Okay, so m star is always equal to one. If it doesn't actually reach that, well, then this doesn't work too well, and we're assuming that if you had contracted it more, then that star property is for that place. So we know from continuity that rho 1 u1 one a1 one is equal to rho 2 u2 two a2. Two. So in this case, what I'm saying is, well, rho star u star, I'll put the star below it. I'm sorry. Ah, it's supposed to be above it. There we go. Star star a star is equal to rho u a. So if I pick some place right here, I can call it 1. I can call it anything I want. That simply has rho u and a, and those two are related. Now, we can do some interesting things there. Because first off, what we know is that u star is actually equal to, yeah, we'll go through lots of this. u star is equal to a star. I know that. And so if I want to, I can divide things around. So I'm going to put all the areas in one side. I'm going to put all of the rows and the u's in the other side. So what I would get then is I would have rho. Make sure I write this out right so I don't mess with the thing. Yes. Rho star over rho is equal to, or times, times a star over u is equal to, there we go, a over a star. Glorious, wonderful, fantastic. And so this is the relationship we're trying to derive here. How are these two areas connected? Okay, how are they connected? Now, I can write out all of this for you. However, it's not very fun. So I'm going to give you the basic idea here, and then I'm going to just jump to the end. So first off, we're assuming here, we have to make an assumption, that this is isentropic flow. Okay, we don't have a really super rough diffuser or nozzle for whatever reason. And so if I have isentropic flow, then uh, I can get a relationship here. So I can find out that my relationship between rho star and rho naught, this is the stagnation density, is going to be equal to 2 over gamma plus 1 times 1 over gamma minus 1. And you're like, where did that come from? I've never seen that equation before. You, you have, you have, I just inverted another equation we're used to. This is the one you're used to, and we need this one as well. I just, my Mach number is 1, so I got to simplify this equation down. And so at the other points in the flow, I don't know what my Mach number is, and so I have to use the full equation. So this guy right here is simply saying that Mach number is equal to 1. So that's all that happened there. Okay. Now if I use both of those, and I use the fact that m star squared is going to be equal to u over a star squared, I can do a whole bunch here. Okay. I can do a whole bunch. So what can I do? Well. Let's see at its basics. I'm going to give you the full equation. I'm not going to give you the full, like, every single step here because it would take... Honestly, it doesn't take... Well, yeah, it takes some time. 
So we're going to come back to this guy and we're going to use what we found now to then simplify. So I'll write it out and then we'll go from there, okay? So I have, let's make sure I write it out correctly. Do, do, do. There we are. I have A over A star is equal to rho star over rho A star over U. And I can also realize that, well, rho star over rho, you're more or less equal to rho star over rho naught times rho naught over rho. Aha! So that's why we needed both of those equations. Okay, so we can plug that in here and we'll get that A over A star is equal to rho star over rho naught times rho naught over rho times a star over u. Glorious! Now, this right here is a function of Mach number. I can just plug it in. This right here is a function of Mach number. And you know what? Guess what? This right here is also a function of Mach number. You're like, but that is Mach number. No. No, it's not. Because remember, if I was just going to say what, you know, m star is equal to, it would be a star. Well, it's still a star over u. But Mach number is equal to u over a. It's not equal to u over a star, okay? So that's something we need to be careful about. And that is not the same as equal to m star. So, the last little detail we can get here is we want to find that last equation which simply be that u over a star squared that's equal to my Mach star squared and that has a big old long equation which I'll give to you and once again I said before in the past tables are always better and I include that right here however if you have a good calculator or you've written a script that can do this for you then you can save a bunch of time by having done that because you'll never have to interpolate but either way make sure you're testing any script that you're making otherwise you're going to have a really bad day Okay, so all three of these are functions of Mach number, which means that my area over A star must be a function of Mach number. So, A over A star is also equal to a function of Mach number, and I'm going to go ahead and give you the equation now. As a note, this is for A over A star squared. That would be equal to... 1 over my Mach number squared times 2 over gamma plus 1 times 1 plus gamma minus 1 over 2 times my Mach number squared gamma plus 1 gamma minus 1. There we go. And so this is also This is also called the area Mach number relationship. Why do they have two of them? I don't know. It just depends on what, who you ask. And it gives us the same result that if we are going supersonic, we have to increase our area to accelerate. And if we are going subsonic, we have to decrease our area to accelerate. So it gives us the same values and the same understanding. And how does it do this? Well, it's always comparing it from Mach 1. Whoop. Things going crazy there. So if I have a flow that's equal to, you know, Mach number is equal to 1. Let's make that an equal sign right here. And this is some point in my flow. This tells me what I have to do. So this right here is a star. How does area at some other point where if a different Mach number compare? Well, if I want to be faster, then I'm going to have to expand. And so if I'm looking for m equals 2, it's going to expand. If I want it to be lower, I'm going to have to 
going to be lower, I also have to contract. So this is what's going to help me understand this relationship. And all of this, luckily, is in the tables. So you don't have to calculate it yourself, do the tables, or practice and get your equation going there. So you, you would think it's all done here, but it's actually not. There's a whole lot more we can pull from these relationships and learn from our um, from these from these equations. We're going to jump into that in just a second.